Like you said, I am a fifth year PhD student at Carnegie Mellon. And today I'm going to uh, show you our method for automatically augmenting decompiler output with variable names and types. So the decompiler is a tool that's commonly used by reverse engineers to examine, examine binaries that they find in the wild. However, anybody that's used a decompiler before knows that they are pretty ineffective at naming variables. So this is a problem. Uh, variable names are essential to code understanding, and renaming variables takes up a ton of reverse engineer's time. So this example is a simplified version of the output of a decompiler, and you can see the names selected for the arguments and variables are an and vn instead of something more meaningful. In addition to type, uh, variable names, it turns out the types are also useful. So in this example uh, that might be output by a decompiler, without knowing about a user-defined data type, the decompiler doesn't understand that the operations on A1 and A2 here are actually structural dereferences. So it outputs a pointer dereference and an array indexing operation instead. So if we instead tell the decompiler about this type that uh, was defined by the programmer, it becomes much clearer that this function is actually computing the distance between two points in 2D space. So going back to the variable naming example, we get a little bit of insight into why this problem is particularly difficult. Um, automatically renaming variables would save a ton of time, but like many of the most interesting problems, uh, it's provably generally impossible to do deterministically. Uh, with only a few exceptions, programmers are free to choose whatever variable names they want. So this quote-unquote correct choice of variable, na variable names compiles to the exact same binary as this choice of variable names. Um, it's, it's pretty intuitive, though, that, uh, and it has been experimentally verified, that actual developers in the real world do not choose variable names at random. In fact, developers often use this, use, write the same code to perform the same tasks. There's only so many ways that uh, you can compute the distance between two points. And if you look at enough examples, you should be able to learn the pattern. So if only there was a large, easily scrapable uh, repository of code that we could use to train an algorithm. So in 2019, we created a system for renaming variables in decompiled code. Uh, it first mined GitHub for thousands of C repositories written by human developers. Uh, we trained a model that could automatically predict up to 73% of the names chosen by the original developers. And uh, we were encouraged by these results, so we decided to take on the problem of uh, retyping variables, too. And if you think about it, predicting types should actually be easier than predicting names. Uh, unlike names, types naturally have a set of constraints. So for example, the C standard defines a character type as a single byte. I, that means in most architectures, you cannot replace a character type with, say, an int type or a float type. Uh, this greatly reduces the search space. Uh, so instead of just conditioning on the context of a variable, you can also ask the decompiler how large the variable is in bytes and use it as a constraint on your prediction. So we actually tried this experiment. We uh, scraped GitHub for C code, uh, and we maintained a database of types and their sizes, and then we trained a model to predict a type based on both its context and constrained the predictions by the type size. So if you'll remember, we were able to recover 73% of variable names, and this task is supposed to be easier. To our surprise, our, the system performed very poorly. We only recovered something like 20% of variable types. This is the problem. The problem is padding bytes. Uh, on the left, you could see some function originally written by a developer. And on the right, you could see the output of the decompiler. As you can see, the x variable here has been decompiled as an array of four characters when it was originally written as an array of three. So here's what happened during uh, compilation. This is a representation of the stack. It's got one byte divisions. When the compiler allocates memory for this function, it adds three bytes for x, then a byte of padding, and then four bytes for y. This is not done in three operations. This is done in one operation. Uh, and when the decompiler sees this function, it just sees that there's two variables, x and y. 
and this is how it conservatively assumes that they are, uh, that they are uh, aligned. It does not know that X is a three byte array or a four byte array where the last byte is just not accessed. And in this case, not only do we not get the answer correct, we provably cannot get the answer correct uh, just because we look through three byte, uh, three byte types. So instead of hard constraints, what we need is soft constraints that we can learn by a model. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through the architecture for uh, the decompiled variable retyper, also known as Dirty. Dirty uses a pretty traditional transformer encoder decoder layout. Uh, first, it takes the text of the decompiled code as a sequence of input tokens, and it creates a representation for each variable together with an attention model and passes it to a decoder. The decoder outputs a prediction. It's a, it's a set of probabilities for each type. The next thing we do is take the data layout information of that same variable and compute a mask. And what this does is when we add the prediction and the mask, we get an actual uh, type prediction. And then we feed this back in and we do this over and over again. So to train and evaluate this, uh, we needed a data set. Uh, we collect and released uh, the data set for idiomatic retyping, which we also call DIRT. This data set was automatically generated from code written by developers and published on GitHub. We compile it with GCC 9.2 uh, with optimizations turned off. I'll talk a bit more about optimizations in a minute. Each function was also decompiled with hex rays uh, with and without debugging information. This allows us to align uh, variables in the, in the code. Uh, and on the side, we saved identifier names and also a database of types, which include things like name and substructure of the type. Um, for training, we split these by binary. This prevents uh, functions from one uh, binary ending up in the same data set, ending up in both the training and the testing data set. So here's our metric. Our success metric is for each function, how often does Dirty's choice of variable type exactly match the developer's choice, including not only structure, but also the names of the type and the names of the fields? So for example, this type here is considered different from this type here, and it's also because the names are different, and it's also considered different from this type here because the fields are different. So we need all of these to be exactly the same. We found that Dirty was able to recover 76% of all types, and then uh, just because scalar types dominate, we also separated out just the uh, structural types, and we found that it was uh, able to recover 69% of structural types. Uh, for more details, comparisons to baselines, you can see our, our paper. So I understand that hex rays is relatively expensive, and you might be wondering why we didn't use a more affordable option, like Ghidra, for example. There's nothing that limits this technique to a specific decompiler. The only re requirements are that it can decompile code, it can return memory information for a variable, and it can import debug information about local variables. Hexrays does all three of these, but Ghidra does not do the last one well. It, uh, I do not know why this uh, issue has been around since 2020 and not resolved. I mean, no disrespect to the Ghidra developers. I think they're doing a great job. Uh, but if you want to use Dirty with Ghidra, you'd have to first fix this issue. So if you guys develop for Ghidra or know anyone who does, you might wanna uh, let them know about that. We also did an experiment with optimizations. Uh, so we, our data set was only O0 and all our training data was also only O0. Uh, but we ran an experiment on uh, the GNU core utils programs where we compiled them at different optimization levels and then we saw what we could do. And we found that there's a 0.19 percentage point drop moving from O0 to O1 and a further 0.01 percentage point drop to O3. We don't actually know why, uh, it seems negligible, but uh, we note that we operate on the textual output of the decompiler, and the decompiler recognizes optimizations like this, or uh, recognizes compiler optimizations, such as uh, moving, uh, moving variables from the stack to an offset from, uh, from a different pointer, or even, in the, uh, even storing them in a register. All of this is re-abstracted away by the decompiler, and we think this is why it doesn't actually have a huge impact on our performance. 
So one thing we noticed during the development of our original renaming system is that better types means better names. Uh, so we just plugged in a new decoder, uh, trained it, and we found that it actually does improve on the state of the art. It moves it from 72.8 to 81.4%. Uh, here's a real example from Dirty. Uh, the code shown is part of a simplified output from a decoder. So if you recall, the goal of Dirty is to rename and retype the arguments and the variable to match the developer's chosen types. You could see that A1 and V3 or A3 and V1 exactly agree with what the developer did. And while A1 and A2 do not agree exactly, uh, they still provide a lot of information. Uh, if you were a reverse engineer and you got picture instead of pick or uh, vice versa, this still gives you plenty of information as to what this function does and how you might, uh, how you might end up using it. So wrapping up, we've created a system that uses machine learning to correctly predict 76% of all types, including 69% on structure types alone. It's also able to predict names at a rate nine percentage points greater than the current state of the art. If you'd like to access either Dirty or the Dirt data set, you can visit our GitHub page with the top link. And we also have a live demo uh, on the bottom link, if you'd like to try that. Thank you. <laughs>